All right, so here's part two. Um, I'm using my phone so I can only upload like 15 minutes at a time. Uh, so I hope y'all can roll with me tonight. You know, I just feel like talking about this. Uh, <laughs> so I hope y'all can bear with me because I think there's something to be learned from this story involving the mother of dragons on the Game of Thrones. For your, those of you who haven't seen my last video on this, um, and you're just catching this segment, I'll include a link in the card so that you can watch the first segment so that you will know where I'm going with this. So you have this mother of dragons, this woman who emerges and she's gradually getting more power and acquiring more kingdoms and all that kind of stuff. And she has this army of eunuchs that help her. And I don't know if I mentioned this in the first one, but this woman, this mother of dragons, her father actually was the king of the seven kingdoms that all these people are fighting over. But this king actually went mad. This king got intoxicated with power to such a degree that he became a brutal dictator and he destroyed villages, killed women and children and just destroyed entire towns and all that kind of stuff. And he basically lost his mind. And one of his guards, for lack of a better word, um, killed him to stop his reign of terror. And, you know, his his entire group of people, the Targaryens, were wiped out completely, except for two people, including the mother of dragons and her brother. Her brother eventually dies. Um, but that's a whole nother story that I won't discuss here. So this woman gains power by liberating these people of color, as I said in the first one, and she gains control over this army of eunuchs. Now, the other two points that I want to focus on is this eunuch and, you know, um, this idea of feminism and the white woman, period. And, you know, people know that I don't have any problem with feminism just as a concept in terms of women having equal rights, control over their lives and over their bodies and their wages and all that kind of stuff. I support equality of all human beings. You know, that's what I support. But I think that there's a lesson to be learned here. You know, it's like this woman, her father was a powerful man. Her, her father was a man of terror. He was a dictator. He was a brutal oppressor. Just like this white woman in America, her father, you know, the white man, white men, they reign in a, a, a reign of terror. They have a reign of terror, a reign of power and oppression over other groups of people just like this mad king. Now this um, mother of dragons, the thing about her, she's saying that she wants to be different from her father. She wants to fight for equality for people. You know, she's freeing people and all this and that. Just like in a way, how this white feminist is, this white woman who is a liberal, even though it's the white man that's caused so much hell in this world, you know, so much destruction and oppression of humanity. You know, often the, this white feminist wants to play the role of liberator after her father, after her men have caused so much destruction on this earth. And that's the great parallel that I see between that feminist and this character, the mother of dragons, you know, they want to play the role of the liberator after it was her fathers and her sons and grandfathers and her men that caused all this chaos and destruction in the world. And I just think that that's, um, you know, it just reflects a certain kind of um, audacity, a certain kind of um, hypocrisy. And a certain kind of sickness is like the fact that people would look upon the daughter of the oppressor as some kind of liberator. That just seems absurd to me. And, you know, often that's what has happened, like with this whole thing where you have these these white women leading this Me Too movement, 
which is good. You know, I support the Me Too movement, but it's like they're leading that at the expense of, you know, women of color. Like a black woman started that whole movement, but she's pushed to the margins. I'm going to have to go in a second. But she's pushed to the margins. Um, and this white woman is elevated like she started the whole thing. Just like this mother of dragons is elevated. You know, the black woman is pushed to the margin. They had a, a Time magazine where the person of the year was the whole women women's movement, the people who are speaking out and saying time's out and, you know, me too. They had that as the person of the year, but they didn't have the actual founder of the Me Too movement, a black woman on that magazine. And I think that that speaks to this whole phenomenon that I'm talking about. Another thing I want to talk about is this eunuch you know, how you have these men that are serving this white queen who are eunuchs. You know, these are men who have been stripped of their manhood, literally stripped of their manhood. And they are servants for this woman, even though in the big scheme of things, without the dragons, they are more powerful than this woman. And that's how I see, you know, black men, whether they are Republicans or Democrats, when they serve these white political masters, they are like those eunuchs. They have deprived themselves of manhood. Instead of serving themselves in their community and being uh, in charge of their own destiny, they are putting their destiny in the hands of somebody else, in the hands of some uh, white political party or some, um, you know, white political boss and all that kind of stuff. And I think that it's time for us to have control over our own destiny, man, and stop being eunuchs. <laughs> so so those are a couple of lessons from this uh, Game of Thrones and this character, Mother of Dragons, that I just had to get out of my system. So tell me what y'all think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.